Turn it up. Streaming online at WDKN.com. I love listening to it over and over. I love it. This is 1015 The One at WDKN Dixon's Country Music Home. You're listening to the Old Timer Show, presented by RFC Broadband on Dixon's only live and local station, 101.5 The One and WDKN. Now, here's your host. And good morning. Good morning, Dixon County. It is Saturday, May the 14th. And we are live here in the WDKN studios in downtown Dixon. You're listening to the Old Timers program. And uh, my name is Justin Spurlock. I'm your host. And I've got a great guest in here with you uh, this morning. We've already been talking about some, some of the old times this morning. We've been uh, just discussing some things. I've got Mr. Dickie Lyons in here with me. How you doing this morning, sir? Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm can't stay too long. I've got to get to the coffee shop. But other than that, I'm doing good. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming in this morning, and, and we've, we've sort of been talking a little bit, but let's, let's for the listeners, uh, let's take it back all the way to your earliest days. I know um, you've been living in Dixon your whole life, right? Right. Take me all the way back to the earliest memories that you have of Dixon. Oh, well, of course, well, I went all through school here. When I went to uh, in elementary school, was at, well, the first grade, I went to Memorial Building. The old Oakmont on Walnut Street on East uh, East Walnut Street over there by across from where Stewart Lumber Company is now had burned. I never went to school there. So I went to the first grade in the War Memorial Building and went to the second grade in the old First Baptist Church that was on the corner down there, kind of close to where the fire department is now. The church is gone. Right, that, that parking lot where the right there yeah. that they've turned into a parking lot. Yeah. And then we then they opened the new Oakmont over on Macklemore Street. The building is still there. It's not a school or a, a elementary anymore. But anyway, uh, then at that time we didn't have kindergarten. But you went a student and a kid would go from the first grade through the sixth grade at Oakmont, and then you go right across that back street, and you take your other six years at the old high school, the old original two-story high school there where the junior high school is now, but that's not, it's not the same building. Right, know. right. So that, uh, that was pretty much the, the school situation then. So my understanding is the, the, the old Oakmont that was on, I guess, Walnut Street and Bryan, yeah. Bryan Avenue yeah. there, um, it burned down. Yeah. And, then, and yeah. then you guys had to go to school in, in the different churches and things oh, yeah. while yeah. they built the new building. Is that right? right? That's, that's, that's correct, yeah. Well, like I say, I went to the to the first grade in in the War Memorial Building there, and on Center Avenue, and then uh, I guess they used most several of the churches around here. You know, they had school in them, and uh, then they got that building up there built, and so it it housed the, the one through six. Well, I, well in about nineteen fifty. Seven or eight, they built Dixon Elementary over here in West Dixon. So then, what they started doing then was, you went to Oakmont from the first through the fifth grade, and then you'd go over to Dixon Elementary for the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and then you would come back to the old high school there. Huh. So they had three locations. That that was all up through the late fifties and sixties. Well, uh, that was that was the way it was until they built a senior high school in 1970, I think. When 1972. So, okay. so I think most people around here who who graduated, I guess, in the last 50 years, because we're celebrating the 50th uh, anniversary over at Dixon County High School, um, has gone to the school over there on Hensley Drive. Yeah. Um, but that's not the case for people who graduated before 1972. They would have gone to school over here on the school. Uh, on College Street, which is today right. known as Dixon Middle School, previously yeah. known as the Dixon Junior High. That's where you went to high school, is that right? Yeah. Tell me a little bit, what was that like back then? Oh, it was nice. We, well, we thought it was nice. We didn't, probably didn't have a care in the world, you know, and just, well, of course, the numbers. When I graduated from high school in 1960, there was about, the, and I'm talking about the total student body, uh, nine through 12, there was about, we had about 425 students. Well, in the first few years over at the senior high school, they had more students than that. 
in the senior class. Mm. You know, they were graduating over 400 students. Right. And we didn't, in 1960, we didn't have a little over 400 in the whole school. But it was a much smaller school, too. But we had a good time there. We liked those school. We had some very good teachers, Miss Miss Mary Frances Sugg, Miss Anna Lee Williams. Uh, uh, they, we just had, and uh, of course, you had Coach Sam Miller and Coach Seth. And uh, they had something back then that, I, I, as I understand it now, that is it's pretty lax. But you had discipline back then. I mean, you had kids cutting up boys. We all, you know, you at lunch you'd hang somebody on the fence, you know, with the bell ring, and they couldn't get off the fence to go back to class after. Of course, we didn't have a cafeteria there. You either brought your lunch or you went home. So every all this, and even in the high school, all of the students were turned loose. Let's say at 11:30, you could go out in the yard and eat and. Uh, you could go home, you could go to a restaurant if you had any money, which we didn't. <laughs> but uh, then everybody would be back at 12.30 and you'd have your afternoon classes. I'm not sure, it was probably around 1958 uh, or 9 that they built a cafeteria in the old building. Mm -hmm. Then our, the football field up until 19... Uh, 59 was where the, the the gym is now at the junior high school. Right, and I, if I understand correctly, it was called Hake Field. Yeah. It and it was, was uh, and and it sat right there where the uh, gymnasium it? is today. Yeah. And the yeah. old uh, building was right there to the left there on Academy, uh, corner of yeah. Academy Street and College Street. Yeah, yeah. And they, they uh, well, then they... We, I think we played the first football games on the present football field down there in the uh, 99, not 99, <laughs> excuse me, uh, the 59 season. A boy named Carlton Dayson, who is deceased now, he scored the first touchdown on that field against Charlotte, the opening game. Oh, wow. But uh, so then – the first year, there was a year there in 1958 and 59, I think, that Dixon, I'm getting the basketball now, Dixon's basketball teams, we played all of our games on the road because that gym wasn't ready. They didn't have it ready. Oh, yeah. They got it ready by Christmas, and then, then we had played the second half of the season in that new gym. But there's a lot of, a lot of water going on to the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and take our first break here. I want to come back and ask you some more about high school over here because I've always been really fascinated by the old Dixon High School, and I've got a set of yearbooks all the way from 1945 all the way up to 72. So I, I get to look through those all the time, and I get to see a lot of really interesting things. So a lot of the stuff that you're telling me here, I've had a chance to kind of look at. So I want to oh. ask you a few more questions if it's all right. But let's go oh, ahead yeah. and take our first break. You're listening to Mr. Dicky Lyons uh, right here on the Old Timers Program. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back here on WDKN. Business Internet is a must. Paying bills, sending emails, updating your website, running social media campaigns, even your phone and credit card machine need reliable internet. But your options are limited, and every provider has its drawbacks. That's why RFC Broadband for Business is here. A truly local business offering wireless high-speed internet options for your business. Affordable prices, no wires, no contracts, no data caps. RFC Broadband for Business, 615-375-8662 or rfcbroadband.com. Simple billing, rural coverage, and again, no contracts or data caps. It's all designed with you in mind. See the difference a local company makes. RFC Broadband for Business, 615-375-8662 or rfcbroadband.com. Currently not available in all areas. Call for availability. In times of joy, in moments of grief, broadcasters come through even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast radio and television more than all other media combined. We are the local broadcasters of radio and television, reaching more people, 
touching more lives. Brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Here we go. And we're back here on WDK, and you're listening to the Old Timers program here uh, this beautiful Saturday morning. Weather is really nice outside. Um, and I've got Mr. Dickie Lyons in, in the studio with me. And over the break, we were, we were talking a little bit about football. Um, and we mentioned uh, just a little bit ago that, you know, Dixon County High School does have a new coach. We talked a little yeah. bit about yeah. that, Mr. Jeff Tomlinson. And I, I, he's been on WDKN when he first got hired. He did a little interview, and we learned yeah. a little bit about him then. I'm hoping I can get him on the show. Just kind of been waiting until he, you know, gets a chance to kind of get his feet wet and, and get things going. Yeah. We were talking a little bit about there was a newspaper article um, in in the the local paper here a few days ago about um, Lieutenant Colonel coming down and kind of whipping the boys into shape. But what they were really doing, because I asked some of the players, is they were doing some kind of kind of team building games with them and and intelligence kind of games to make them problem solve and think. And and it wasn't just out there just running and and doing the physical side, but the this Lieutenant Colonel had them thinking in a different kind of way. So it was really interesting. Um, and you said that you played football way back when uh, <laughs> over here at the uh, Dixon High School, over here on College Street, not the Dixon yeah. County High School no, no, out no, on the no, hill no, on no, Hens- Hensley Drive, but the old Dixon High School. Uh, let's go back and talk a little bit more about that. Um, tell me a little bit about your days on the football team. Well, I going to mention just a little bit during the break there. The kids weren't – you didn't have – 250 and 300 pound uh, high school football players back in those days. That's bigger than college. <laughs> there wasn't many in colleges that, oh, some of the best athletes that ever came through Dixon was and played ball, you know, football or basketball, where, uh, you know, they they probably 160, 70 pounds. Which now, you know, now you've got running backs that are 240 pounds and can run a, a nine second, uh, you know, Four, a little over four seconds for a forty-yard dash. Yeah, but back then we just—you just didn't have them. Had, but you didn't have the variety back then either. If when I was in high school in the late fifties, there at, at least at Dixon High School, if you were a boy, you had a chance to play football or basketball. If you were a girl, you had a chance to play basketball. Or back then they had majorettes on the band, which took care of some of them. And that was it. You, I think, if you were, if you would count up now the the athletic opportunities that these students have now, and it's a great thing. Yeah. I'm not bad mouthing it. Even at the junior high schools, if you put add the boys and girls sports together, you probably got 14 or 15 sports that a student there has an opportunity if they want. I mean, you know they. Football, basketball, baseball, softball, tennis, track, soccer. Yeah. You never heard of soccer back then. You right, know. right. <laughs> soccer was something they did in Europe. You know, not yeah. Yet. So, it, but it's a it's a good thing, but uh, it's just different. Back then, you know, the whole the whole community when it came August, the whole community started talking about football. It just, I mean, that was it. I mean, people on Main Street and in the coffee shops, they they started talking about football. And uh, of course, you got to win. I th- I don't I think any sport you play, I don't care whether it's at the high school level, college level, professionals. If you let the Titans up there, for example, uh, if they won two games a year and lost thirteen or fourteen, it wouldn't take but a year or two. You wouldn't have anybody going to those ball games. And one of the things that's sad to me, and I'm not going to point fingers at anybody, they ain't no telling how many football games I've seen in my lifetime, but it's gotten to the point here at Dixon High School, well, I've had a choice here in the last couple of years. I've, I've been to more games at Creekwood than I have at Dixon High School just simply because they had a better team. Yeah. And they had better records. I mean, they were uh, – I told a fellow the other day, if uh, it's sad when you get to the situation in, in football, and hopefully this new guy going to change that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if if you look at game comes comes up Friday night and you got nothing else to do, you say, well, Dixon is playing so and so over here, and you say, well, if they've got a fifty fifty chance of winning, I'm willing to get out and drive over there and buy a ticket and watch them. But when you you're about 90% sure that they ain't going to win. 
you know, you win one or two games a season. And and I'd like to see that him get better. I hope it yeah. does get better. Well, I think the new coach is, is well-liked by the players and, and coaching staff and, and teachers all seem to – to like him, and hopefully that will all translate to the field. He seems to have some new ideas well, that I think are yeah. are hopefully going to get things changed. Um, but tell me a little bit. So talking about football coaches, um, and look, we're lucky we have a new one. They have a really good one out at Creekwood, by the way, uh, Houston. He's, yeah. he's, he's a great coach out there. He's done great things out there, and I hope he stays for a long time, <laughs> keeps that program rolling. Um, and, and luckily Dixon, you know, we're, we're we'll Dixon County is, is changing, uh, switching it up. But there's – uh, always been really good football coaches here in Dixon County, and you mentioned a couple of coaches when, when you first came in here. One, M- M- well, Melton Self, he was a uh, he was a pretty good coach. Coach Hamdorf and Coach Hamdorf, yeah. Coach Hamdorf, uh, they were good teachers. They were good disciplinary. I mean, they were good classroom teachers. You didn't have any problems. They they never had any problems in their classroom. Coach Self taught economics. Nobody misbehaved in that class, or in Coach Hamdorf's class. And for the most part, you didn't mis- you didn't misbehave in Miss Sugg's class or Miss Annalee's class, or or any of them, because they knew students knew that the first thing they're gonna do if you show out in one of these women's classes, you know, they're gonna call Coach Self or Coach Hamdorf, and you ain't gonna like that. <laughs> <laughs> and and they just. Uh, but football, Coach, they both, Coach Self was an outstanding football player at Austin P. The worst thing about him is he was from Alabama, but uh, we, for, <laughs> we forgave him for that. But, uh, and Coach Hamdorf was an outstanding player at Tennessee Tech up there. I think I've heard, and, and I can't prove this, but he's the only athlete I've ever heard of in college that earned – 16 letters he lettered in four sports four years yes at tennessee i've read that I, I believe that to be true well he was just a good athlete and uh they well they they were just well they were good people and uh of course then there were a lot of boys back then in the coming up through the 50s there and i don't know if if they had not had the opportunity to play football at high school, at play football, they'd have quit. They'd have went to the farm. They'd have went somewhere. They 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 wouldn't. That kept them in school. Kept them going. Yeah. Kept them uh, wanting to keep coming to school because because <laughs> of football. And it's still like that today. I have to say, is there's it, some guys out there some, who it, well, sports it, gives them a reason to go to school every reason, day. Yeah. And that's yeah. a good thing. Well, and it's good for the community. You know, be well. You probably let's see. I I may get my days wrong here, but I think it was. 57, Dixon, we played in a bowl game, down a Rotary Bowl down in Lexington, Tennessee. Uh, yeah. They chartered a train, a train. They, The players didn't, we got on the school bus and rode down there. But anyway, anybody that wanted to, and uh, they showed up over here at the old depot that's still there, caught a train, went to uh, Lexington to that Rotary Bowl, and uh, – that was something. I know a little bit about this because oh, it's in one of the old yearbooks that I have. And there's a picture of a helicopter landing on the 50-yard line. All right, but that that was the tobacco bowl up in Hartsville. Okay, so well, I'm mixing Frank them up. Frank Clement was governor. Okay, yeah, that yeah. That was him. That's, that, what, that's um, what I'm thinking of then. That's him that unloads from that uh, chopper or helicopter. And... Uh, at that ball game, we lost that ball game. If we'd had another five minutes, I think we could have won it, but we didn't. So there were some pretty big. Uh, Dixon played in some pretty big football games in the 1950s, is what yeah, we're saying. Yeah, here. yeah. Well, and you know, you play back then. You didn't have this classification. You didn't have a one A, two A, three A, all that. You could play anybody you wanted to. You know that you could work a schedule. Of course, you played. Uh, I guess the longest trip we took back then was Lawrenceburg. We played Lawrenceburg for several years back then. That's a good way to on school bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, no, we played Centerville and Waverly. Uh, of, course, of course, you still had the schools in White Bluff and Charlotte. They had their own team, say. We played Charlotte. We never did play White Bluff in football. But, you know, uh, so, but 
it it was just a little different back then, you know. Everything wasn't as fast paced, and you know, and now everything got you should have been done yesterday instead of. But I guess just more laid back, I guess you you would call it. Well, I think our football uh, conversation has caught the attention of some listeners this morning, uh -oh. and Coach Prophet. Has just sent me a text saying that he's listening. Coach Prophet, if you don't know him, he's actually the Dixon Middle School head football coach. So uh -huh. he's the the Dixon Dragons. Uh, you know how uh -huh. um, Dixon Cougars were formed in 1972. Well, the yeah. Dragons uh, logo and, and mascot and nickname and all of that tradition and history carried on with the junior high and now the middle school. Yeah. And so he coaches that team. Oh, and so, okay. um, uh -huh. You know, they're, they're keeping the legacy alive yeah. of the old Dixon High School through the junior high, middle school yeah. uh, football team. And so, um, just so you know, the what you guys created back then is, is the legacy is still, still still around right well, now. Good, good. Yeah. But, uh, well, no, that's a good thing. Well, you know, where well, you go up to the junior high school now, you know, and and that gym is, is called the Milton Self Gym. Mm -hmm. And the field down there. Is the old field, like you said, was Hake Field. Right. That, that the gym set in place there, but uh, they uh, they a few years ago, I think they named that field for Coach Hamdorf. They the, did the, the football field that where the junior high school plays. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's still named after him. His there's a sign. It's a little worn out. Is it? the sign's a little worn out and uh, <laughs> probably needs to be repainted. But it, it's still there. Yeah. It's still named after him, and I don't think it'll that'll ever change. Oh, I don't. I hope not. Right. No, he, if anybody deserved it, they deserved it, both of them. Both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Coach Seff did a lot, well, especially for, well, the football, but for the girls' basketball here, you know. Because, like I say, the girls, other than basketball or being a majorette or, I guess, a cheerleader, they had no opportunities. I mean, they, was, they could be in the glee club or something like that, I guess, but uh, – you know, it's it's just a good thing that they did, and uh, they had some they had some good football teams and some good uh, basketball teams. Well, let's go ahead and take our last break. I want to come back and ask you a little bit about being a teacher yourself, um, and uh, we'll come back on the on the other side of this break, and we'll talk a little bit about that before we go. Unfortunately, time is running out, and <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Reagan's going to get in here right after well, us. Uh, well, we'll lock the door. See him coming. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, take our last break here. We'll be right back on the Old Timers program. Business internet is a must. Paying bills, sending emails, updating your website, running social media campaigns, even your phone and credit card machine need reliable internet. But your options are limited, and every provider has its drawbacks. That's why RFC Broadband for Business is here. A truly local business, offering wireless high-speed internet options for your business. Affordable prices, no wires, no contracts, no data caps. RFC Broadband for Business, 615-375-8662 or rfcbroadband.com. Simple billing, rural coverage, and again, no contracts or data caps. It's all designed with you in mind. See the difference a local company makes. RFC Broadband for Business, 615-375-8662 or rfcbroadband.com. Currently not available in all areas. Call for availability. You want to feel connected, at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, we have an accident on the expressway. when important things happen, if you see this man, contact authorities immediately. We're here, at all hours, in the moment, on every device in your life. Your local radio and TV broadcasters. We investigate and inform. Our political investigation saved taxpayers. Give back to the community. Our radio station is now accepting donations to help rebuild this community. Even save lives. It's time to just hunker down. It's too late now to leave. America's number one source for news, weather, and information on your radio, TV, computer, tablet, and smartphone. We are broadcasters. Always here for you, wherever here may be. Tell Washington local stations matter by texting RADIO to 52886. Furnished by NAB and the station, message and data rates may apply. And we're back here on the Old Timers program. And unfortunately, we've only got a couple more minutes here. I've oh, got man. Mr. Dickie Lyons here with me. I wanted to mention real quick, though, Coach Prophet just sent me another message and said, you know, remind everybody that the maroon and white football game will be taking place on the 19th 
um, at 5.30 p.m. right over here on Homer Hamdor Field. So if anybody wants to come see some good football, some young men, grades 6, 7, and 8, that's oh. their uh, the, the grades of the middle school there. So yeah. they're carrying on the Dragons' legacy. So if you want to see them, that will be on the 19th at 5.30 p.m. Now, we've only got a couple more minutes, but I did have to ask you about this. You know, I'm a teacher over at Dixon County High School, and, yeah. and Chuck Daniel teaches over there with me. Charlie's oh, son, yeah, and yeah. Uh, he told me that you were really good at dodgeball and that you, <laughs> you're a PE teacher yourself, and you yeah. did that for many years. Let's talk about that real quick before we wrap up here. Well, a lot of the kids, especially the boys and a lot of the girls too, really liked that game, you know, in the gym. And like I said on the break, I wasn't trying to make athletes out of elementary kids that came to PE. I wanted them to have fun, have a good time. And they might do a little exercise for – Five minutes, and then for 25 minutes, and just let them play dodgeball. And what school were you a uh, PE teacher? I was teacher at Oakmont at? then, and uh, I was at Dixon Elementary. We had a bad situation at elementary because back then, all the kids had to go to PE every day. And that meant you can and that was a sm fairly small gym over at Dixon Elementary. Uh, Miss Glenda Sharp had the girls, and I had the boys. Well... You couldn't have them all out there on the floor at the same time. So I had the, the situation where the boys had to sit in the bleachers for 20 minutes while the girls were playing, while she did something with the girls. Well, in order to keep those boys, I, and I knew all of them wanted to play dodgeball. I said, okay, if you y'all behave up here in the bleachers while the girls are playing, and then we'll play dodgeball. If you can't behave, we'll just run relay races or exercise the whole time. <laughs> It was a good it, uh, blackmail, kind of what it amounted to, but but they liked to play dodgeball and they had a they had a lot of a lot of fun doing it. But we I, I got into a game later on over here at Centennial, and, and you'd think the boys would dominate, but these little girls we played uh, floor hockey. I had nets and sticks and pucks, and these little it was amazing how aggressive that some of these third and fourth grade girls would get. You better not show out, you know, or they'd, they'd run into you. They'd knock you down. <laughs> and I was glad. I was glad to see it. It was fun watching them. But I think now they just about – they don't even have to go to peace. They don't want to. <laughs> well, they still have it, but, uh, you know, they kind of mix it in and, and – uh, you know, they they still do, though, as far yeah. as I know. I don't know if it's every single day, but it's still a regular class there at the elementary level. And even all the way up to the high school, they've still got the PE classes. Yeah. So, well, we're about to have to get out of here. Mr. Dale Reagan's going to get in here. And you know uh -oh. Mr. Dale, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, I tried <laughs> to get you to lock the door, but you didn't. Uh, anyway, I'm getting, I don't know. He's a good fella. Good fella. Now, is there anything you want to tell? Usually this is what I ask teachers before we end the show. Is there anything you want to say to any former students that may be listening and thinking, you know, I remember him from school and, and uh, remember the good times. Is there anything you'd like to say to any former students or anybody like that listening? Well, yeah, they quit, need to quit coming up and telling me when I paddle them. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember paddling me back so-and-so and so-and-so. And, well, some of them deserved it. <laughs> I think the paddle was a good thing. I, I don't mean... I don't think any kid should be abused or, but a little spanking, you know, I think it kept 90% or 95% of your kids in line. The threat of it, the yeah. threat of it would, the kids, you know, if they knew that you could get them to take a bend over, they'd bend over and grab the bottom of the pants leg and you could give them two or three little whacks with a paddle, that kept them in line. Well, I guess you can't do that anymore. No, no, you can't. <laughs> well, Mr. Lyons, thank you for coming in today. You're We're going to have to get out of here and let Mr. Dell have the studio. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate you taking the time to come in here, and hopefully we can get you back in here sometime to talk some more about the old days. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thanks, for everybody, for listening. I'll be back in about 30 minutes. Stay tuned. Mr. Dell Reagan is up next. In times of joy. <laughs>